much for being here today and uh, to, to answer our, uh, our request for a press conference. We are a group of MAPs, a small group of MAPs right now. Many, of our, many others are uh, were not here today due to the, uh, the circumstances that we're facing right now. Uh, many of us are joining online. Others, other of us are supporting us, uh, you know, from, from their homes. And uh, the reason why we wanted to call this press conference today is to raise serious concerns about the fact, uh, this, about the discussion that is currently going on in the parliament, that us as MEPS, our staff members, and the staff that is working for the parliament will not be able to enter, apparently soon, the premises unless they have a green certificate. And uh, this, is, this is raising a lot of concerns to many of us as MAPs, to many of our staff members, and to many of the workers that are working for the European Parliament. So uh, I'm here today with my colleagues. On my left is uh, our colleague, uh, Christine Anderson from Germany. Uh, further to the left, our colleague, you know, Francesca Donato from Italy. And to my right, my colleague, my colleague Ivan Sincic uh, from Croatia. We are from different political groups. Uh, we have other members uh, from the left to the right, spectrum of the political groups that are all concerned about this problem, about this issue, that the basic fundamental rights of us, of our assistants, I say, of the staff members, and nevertheless of the European citizens are deeply under threat right now. And uh, before I go any further, I would say with uh, what I personally have to say, I want to, I want to introduce uh, my colleague, Kristen Anderson. I know she, has, uh, she had different positions, tough positions on this issue, and I would like uh, her to uh, express that. Thank you. Yeah, vielen Dank. Um, yeah, also the Thank you very much. The main problem in my view, in connection with this COVID crisis, is that civic rights are being increasingly curtailed. And it's not clear why citizens would go along with this. One of the reasons might be, and this is one of the disadvantage of free democratic societies, that you always reach a point at which you believe that democracy and the rule of law and freedom are somehow God-given, that they've always been there and that they will survive. Whereas in actual fact, these are rights that have to be battled for. And that is why we have to do more to fight for this right to freedom. And that is why these fundamental principles which are anchored in the basic law in the constitution in germany should not be viewed as privileges which are given by the government and can then be withdrawn and i am unequivocal about the fact that i I'm not fearful of COVID at all. What I am worried about are the kinds of governments which exploit this crisis in order to curb civic freedoms and to grant certain privileges or not, as the case may be. What we stand for in Europe is freedom, democracy and the rule of law. And there can be no reason for those rights being curtailed by governments. That is the real problem here. That is a problem we need to deal with. Make it clear to the people of Europe that they should not tolerate this for a moment longer. Thank you. Francesca. Thank you very much to you all. It's very important for me to be here today. I think that uh, um, all that uh, my colleague uh, Christine has said is really important. Um, we have a, a really terrible situation in Europe today because, uh, as she said, uh, human rights are not respected. We have the uh, European Chart of Human Rights, which has the full value of a treaty and should be um, taken into account by all national governments while uh, writing their laws. But, in fact, it's obliterated today. 
because fundamental human rights, such as uh, um, human right to individual freedom, to employment, equality, education, health, free expression of thought, are seriously violated. And all over Europe, uh, peaceful protests are violently repressed. So uh, we had uh, uh, in Europe, uh, uh, the European Union and the European Parliament introduced a COVID certificate just to facilitate movement between member states and uh, with the purpose to avoid any discrimination against not vaccinated people. But whereas the Italian government and other national government in uh, Europe uh, um, has introduced, have introduced a, a compulsory COVID certificate for every social activity, such as entering uh, public uh, premises uh, or traveling inside the countries, uh, or for, in Italy, just uh, also employment, uh, um, university education, and so on. They just make a big discrimination between uh, uh, vaccinated people and unvaccinated, because uh, we have the introduction of an absolute presumption of infectivity for non-vaccinated people and of non-infectivity for, for vaccinated people that are both scientifically unfounded. And so we are forcing citizens to receive invasive and risky health treatment because uh, the uh, informed consent that citizens are obliged to sign to receive the vaccines is not free, it's, it's a, a constraint concern, uh, consent. So uh, even when people have uh, medical contraindications for receiving vaccines, they are obliged to do that, they are forced to do it because they would lose the job would lose their fundamental rights if they don't. And when these people have adverse effects, even very severe adverse effects, they don't receive any free assistance. Even the reports of adverse effects are very rare. So the data, the data of adverse effects that we can read on papers are just underestimated. So we, we have a, a, a medical issue who has, uh, which has turned into a democratic issue. We, we must today, I think, uh, all stand for the defense of human rights uh, in Europe. And we must do it all together and we must do it now. We can't wait any longer because a lot of people are suffering, are losing their jobs. A lot of families are losing their li uh, right to have uh, uh, money to leave. And uh, this involves not only national citizens, such as Italians or French people, but also foreign ones who work and live in other countries in the European Union, where the rights of establishment for workers and the right of circulation is one of the founding rights of the European unity and the European Union. So I, I ask, I call for stopping violently repressing demonstrators, just listening to uh, demands from people and Let's give back to people their right to live a full life with all the human rights without any more distinguish, distinction between vaccinated and unvaccinated people. Let's treat everybody as human beings, as our uh, chart of human rights uh, uh, obliges us to do. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Ivan. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Ivan Vili Barsincic, member of the ENVI Committee, Environment, Public Health and Food Safety. And all of the, these documents about managing COVID crisis went through our committee. I can freely say that. 
And I must say that it is really sad to see our freedoms, rights and rule of law endangered in Europe today. Unfortunately, in some countries, you cannot keep your job without a digital green certificate. You cannot enter a public building without a DGC. You cannot enter a shop without a DGC. We are facing now, on the contrary, more and more evidence in practice and more and more scientific research and evidence that people carrying DGC can indeed infect other people. DGC is a license to spread and infect. Unfortunately, DGC gives a false sense of security. DGC is completely illogical, it's non-scientific, and it must be abandoned. I fully support the staff of the European Parliament in their positions, the positions of non-discrimination, non-segregation, the freedom to come to the workplace. This is their workplace, along with us, the MEPs. Uh, the implementation of proportional and adequate sanitary measures, the vaccine not being compulsory. 100% teleworking offered for vulnerable staff, free and informed consent, as my colleague said, which are prescribed with various international documents from Oviedo Convention, Nuremberg Code, resolutions of Council of Europe. We have Council of Europe right there, a few meters from this parliament building. Free and informed consent, a right which belongs to individual freedoms to decide whether or not to say yes or no to a medical act of any kind, medical treatment of any kind. A message to the staff is simple. You're not alone and fight for your rights and we are fighting along with you. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. I want to quote something precisely from the regulation that was voted a few months ago that imposed all across Europe this green certificate. The paragraph 46 of that regulation states the following, and I quote, this regulation respects the fundamental rights and observes the principles recognized in particular by the chapter, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, including the right to respect for private life and family life, the right to, uh, uh, to the protection of personal data, the right to equality before the law and non-discrimination, the right to free movement, and the right to an effective remedy. Member states should comply with the char Charter when implementing this regulation. This is what we were stated in this regulation, and this is what we was voted, and what was agreed out of the trialogue. Well, if we look now, a few months after this green certificate was imposed in the European Union, we, don't, we see exactly the opposite. All these rights, that allegedly were supposed to be protected by this regulation are actually violated right now. People cannot work anymore, and they live under the threat of losing their jobs and their livelihoods if they are not having this certificate. I have a colleague here from Italy. We have about a million and a few hundred thousand Romanians in Italy, many more Polish, many more Bulgarians and other people from Eastern Europe. They are all citizens of this European Union with equal rights. I have to tell you that in the past few weeks, I'm bombarded with petitions from people in Italy, from people in France, from people in Spain, concerned that they will be losing their jobs if they don't have this green certificate. The problem is many of these people already had COVID-19. They have proof that they have the antibodies, the natural antibodies, and nobody cares. They are forced to do or to be exposed, for example, or to take a medical product that for what various reasons they don't want to take it. If they don't do it, they will lose their jobs. So our concern is, is this the type of European Union that we want to build, that we want to accept? Is this the European Union as it is stated in the Treaty of the European Union that this union is a space of freedom? Do we still have that freedom anymore or not? So I was, you know, we were some of the people, I would say, that raised these concerns during the debates in the plenary when this green certificate was debated. At that point, our voice was in a minority and is proven by the votes. The problem now is more and more people in Europe are affected by the decision made even by this House. You've seen the protests in Italy and in many other countries. 
unbelievably, I'm coming from a former communist country, former communist country. We haven't had a protest for liberty since the fall of communism. Out of the blue, we see people now in Romania, and we've seen, you know, interestingly enough, in Spain, in Italy, and in many other countries, fighting for freedom, for liberty. They're not fighting for higher pensions, for higher salaries, or for any of these other rights. They simplify for the basic human right of being free to decide implicitly what they want to do with their body. So this issue was raised by us. It's proven by the records of the parliament. Now it's affecting a lot of people, a lot of our citizens. Now the problem is that it's affecting all of us here. And it's threatening the parliamentarian democracy even of this house. Because if we will not be allowed to enter this house, Unless we have a green certificate, we will not be able to do our job here. But along with us, it's our assistants and our staff members. I have to tell you that us and many others of us were contacted anonymously, you know, or off the record, I would say, by many of the staff members who are deeply concerned. People that work for this house for decades, they have a family, they have mortgages, Credits in banks. And they, now they live with this threat that sooner than later, if they don't have this green certificate, they will be losing the job. But they haven't done anything wrong. This is, the, this is the absurd situation. Many of them already went through this insane illness that killed so many people. They have proved that they developed a natural immunity. And for some reason, unknown reason, illogical reason, non-medically proven reason, they will be faced with losing their jobs unless they have a green certificate. It is not fair to them. It is not fair to the citizens of this union. And it's not fair to all of us. You know, we were elected here to represent our citizens. We have our assistants, you know, who are helping us to serve our citizens. But nevertheless, there are thousands of people working for the parliament, for the commission, for the council. Without them, we will not be able to do our jobs. They are the unknown people that are actually carrying this, this, everything that we do here and everything that we have here. And just this stress to come to work every day, to be threatened, to be afraid that you might lose your job because you don't have a certificate that is not certifying anything. Because clearly, if you're vaccinated, you can get COVID and you can spread the virus. I mean, it's proven already. And if you have a negative test, that is just proving that at the moment when you got the test, you were negative. But it doesn't mean when you leave the office or the testing place, you might not get infected and infect other people. Interestingly enough, in the parliament, and this is the absurd situation, we all agree that if you have proven of natural immunity, you should be allowed to travel free. They remove that from the regulation. So now healthy people, healthy people, cannot exercise their basic fundamental right. So an idea that's, or a regulation that started with the idea in mind to facilitate freedom of movement, now it's a tool, I would say, used to condition your right to work, your right to eat, your right to travel, your right to personal life, and many other things. So the reason why we had this press conference is to express through our voices the concerns of us, the concerns of our staff members, and nevertheless, the concerns of hundreds and maybe thousands of people that are working in the parliament, in the council, and many other European institutions. We are here for you, and we will fight for you.